Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Cranked and Ranked. I don't know why I'm being so calm about it. It's like I'm on like nighttime adult contemporary radio where they're like, <laughs> and now dedications from Lost Loves. This song is from Barry White. <laughs> You're tuned into WPIG the pig. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum grunt. That's it's funny that, that that was such a calm intro to to uh, uh, such an aggressive <laughs> band that we're going to be ranking this episode yeah. or these two episodes, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to part one of a two part Sepultura album ranking, and I and we're not doing this shit where we just do the 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 Derek Green era albums and then we separate the Max Cavalera albums. No. We're not we're not Whole doing thing. that. We're ranking all of the shit, all of the full length studio albums. Um, I'm your host, Old Head. With me as always, Mr. Eddie Sparks. Hello, sir. Roots. Bloody roots. I'm gonna refrain from doing too much Max Cavalera because that impression fucks my voice and I'm not very good at it, so it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some of those guys, you oh, know. I Max and you know Derek Green, of course. Like any any vocalist that still does that real shouty and growly type stuff at that age and still pulls it off. Like I'm just like kudos yeah. because I just try to do it for a second and I'm coughing for like an hour. So, <laughs> um, but yes, for those of you who are new to this, um, uh, we are a podcast where we rank band discographies um, and other we shit are. today. Um, because this is such a large discography, it's 15 full-length albums. We're halving it up. Today's going to be the bottom eight. Uh, and then next time, obviously, if you do math, it'll be the top seven. Um, for those of you watching at home, you can see that I'm, I'm wearing a, a Sacred Reich t-shirt. We're not ranking Sacred Reich. I'd like to do that soon, eventually. I would like to. Yeah. Um, but it, it relates to this episode because I just saw Sacred Reich uh, here in Houston uh, on Friday, and they were opening for Sepultura. And um, honestly, because I am an old man and I'm a husband and a father, I only stayed for a couple songs of Sepultura. And um, I might get to it later, my thoughts on it, because like they played like their first song out of the gate. I was like, yeah, if this is fucking good. Second song, I kind of went, Oh, <laughs> and so it was a good time to leave. So, so yeah. on that on on that note, we we do this thing where we uh, before we start ranking a, a, an artist, we talk about where this artist came into our lives and kind of our relationship with them. But which, honestly, depending on the episode, ranges everywhere from I've loved them since I was a kid all the way to um, I just now listened to their albums for the first time. And but this is one where I think we both know a lot of their stuff. I mean, I know all of their stuff. Yeah. Um. And so my, I think my introduction to them was the album Arise. And mm -hmm. um, I had some friends in high school, had to have been freshman year of high school, who had that album. And I mean, it, it's, it goes without saying, you hear the, the first song on the album, you hear the song Arise. And oh. if you're a thrash metal fan, yeah. you're just like, fuck me, dude. <laughs> um, so I was really, really into them, you know, ever since, like I've, I followed them, you know, in one way or another ever since now, the one, the, the disclaimer that I'm going to have to put here on this video is, um, today is going to be a, a roller coaster of emotions for me. Um, you're going to yeah. have to bear with me and realize that, um, I don't think Sepultura have ever done a bad album. That's I want to put that out there before I ever say anything else. Hmm. On, on that note, I do have to add on top of that, that I do, I did go through a period where I was just kind of like, why are they doing this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> even though it was, even though it was, the stuff was good and some of it has aged well for me. Hmm. Um, I was, a if you, if you literally cut off, Sepultura after Roots, like if they, for some reason they had split up and gone their separate ways, Sepultura would be a top 10 band for me. That's how yeah. much I love those first handful with Max Cavalera, the original lineup of the band and everything. Um, but 
uh, as you, you're going to hear me talk about it today and and, and next week, uh, I, I kind of I came back around and um, not not as much as to where I love everything as much as their original stuff. But um, I have a, a renewed uh, interest and respect for the, the dudes in Sepultura. Sepultura. And so um, and so you will hear me being critical. OK, folks because that's what we do here. Um, but yeah, I just want to throw out there that like, I don't think they've done, they've done one album that I think you could probably say is bad. Um, I'll get that one out of the way at the beginning. <laughs> um, the rest of them, um, you, any person could come to me and say, that's my favorite Sepultura album. And I would say, I get it. I get it. So, um, so where did you come on board with Sepultura? Uh, whew, my uncle, this was a nice mug. Oh yeah. Cool mug. It's my black, my black album mug. I'm trying to like, I use the same mugs all the time. As much as I love my wife and her beautiful face. Um, I, uh, I, I'm all like, Oh, every once in a while, I'm gonna sneak in some other mugs. I have other mugs. Yeah. Might as well, you know, show them off on, uh, on the Listen, video. Honey, if you're, if you're Sundays the are for world. the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, if you're, if, if people, I'm actually really curious because we, we, you, we get basically no feedback from the podcast side of things. So um, everyone that's listening to this as a podcast, if everyone could do me a huge favor, open up your, your email right now and go and send an email to oldheadpodcast at gmail.com that just says podcast listener. Because I would like to know who's actually still listening to this as a podcast, because yeah. we're now doing these visual versions on YouTube and there's immediate interaction because there's likes, there's comments, and you know I know what's going on. Podcast world no fucking clue you know and um, i mean i know people are listening because i see the analytics but i'm all like you know how much of that is the sort of thing where it's just in there you know they're 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 subscribed or whatever to a podcast Mm -hmm. and it just automatically comes to their feed and it gets counted for something i don't know but anyway oldheadpodcast at gmail.com just drop me a quick thing telling me that you're a podcast listener because um it's interesting to like kind of be throwing things out there and be like i don't know who's (laughs) fucking listening anyway Sorry, your 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 uncle um, turned yeah. you on to Sepultura. Uh, yeah. Basically, it was a case of uh, he was just talking to me about you know metal bands one time, and he he said, "Have you heard Sepultura yet?" And I went, "No, actually, I haven't." Bearing in mind, I'm like twelve, so I'm I'm very new to this. Yeah. And uh, he said, "Let me get something." He goes and he gets Chaos AD. He puts it in the computer to like rip it to my iPod. And then like the next day on the bus, I was like, oh yeah, he put this album on. Oh, oh so you, you, start, you started with uh, Chaos AD. Yeah. And I thought, okay. oh, I, I like that. Yeah. And I like, yeah, I just heard it and I thought it was a really interesting album. But, yeah. you know, I, I got into, this was around the time I was really getting into metal and the first genre i took to was thrash so that when i found out they had previously done much more thrashy stuff i was like yeah okay and this is some of the best shit i've ever heard in my life you know yeah that's <laughs> so, yeah that's pretty much where i came in on sepulter is just quite a short little story there yeah so so it, that's interesting though that it was in the 2000s yet the first sepulter you ever heard was the max cavalera version of sepultura well, that was like it would have been a classic at that point. Of, yeah, of the 90s. Ab- absolutely. And yeah. um, so yeah, we'll we'll get into all all of these. Uh, there's a lot of things that we'll end up talking about along the way because there's a lot to talk about with Sepultura. Um, yeah. So we might as well just jump into it and get this uh, two parter rolling. Um, cool. So uh, let's start off as as usual. I throw it over to Eddie Sparks uh, to to kick us off with his um, bottom of the barrel album. Um, and uh, his number 15. What's your number 15 Sepultura album? I'll be interested to hear if we have the same one. Okay. I I looked at this discography and I thought, what's the point as to where I thought they'd kind of, you know, they'd, they'd run with the same thing for a little long. And I chose uh, Roar Back for my number 15. Okay. I believe that's the third with, with Derek Green, I believe. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. 2003, it came out. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, 
you know, right out of the gate, you get Come Back Alive, which is an energetic opener. You know, Green, uh, Derek Green sounds a little bit like Burton C. Bell from Fear Factory at points on this album, which is cool. Um, Godless is pretty cool. Apes of God gives me Lamb of God vibes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, more of the same. This song title is ironic because so far in this discography now, they've kind of camped out in a zone and just stuck to it. They've thrown yeah. in the odd thing here or there, but it the formula is it's kind like, of run dry at this it's point. It's like, are you sure you want to call this one more of the same? All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, then you get Urge, which is a pretty dynamic track. Corrupted has a slow, nasty groove in it with the ride symbol, which is pretty tasty. Uh, as it is, is a, a vibey sneaker, as I called it. Uh, Mind War uh, gives me helmet kind of vibes. I've got like kind of a helmet feel here. Mm -hmm. uh, Leech is a wild, fast one. Uh, the Rift. See, this is the thing because it's two, 2003. Yeah. On The Rift, I was just thinking they definitely heard Slipknot and were like, we should try that. <laughs> yeah. Um, bottomed out <laughs> bottomed out made me laugh because when Derek green belts out his vocals on this he kind of sounds like bender from futurama and i couldn't <laughs> unhear it <laughs> um activist is one of their faster punky ones and then mm -hmm. the outro kind of speaks for itself i mean it's like a feedback interference type thing yeah and the, my my main reason for putting it here is because while there are points on it where they really do hit something cool i'm like I can't take away from you that that part is is filthy. That's really cool. Yeah. At this point, the thing is, you you, you can trace all the way from uh, their first album, all the way up to Roots, and there is a clear evolutionary thing happening. Yeah. And then when you get to Roots, it's like okay, they've gone full groove, and then against is basically roots with a different singer with some faster stuff on it then you get nation which is again sitting in that kind of groovy new metal-y sort of thing yeah and then you get roar back which again is in the new metal-y groovy sort of thing but it's not really added anything that would set it apart you know so that that's that's why this one for me had the number 15 spot it just felt a little bit no, it felt a little bit safe for what they had been doing at the time. So, uh, yeah, that's my number okay. 15. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so it's, it's, it's interesting because I know that there will be those people listening and watching who, um, prefer one camp over the other. Um, mm -hmm. they love the original Sepultura and then some people prefer the Derek green Sepultura stuff. Um, and, um, and I, you know, I, it seems like there's very few that are cool with all of it in it equally. It seems like everybody's got a preference, um, and I definitely have a preference. But it did not stop me from putting it number fifteen. What I consider to be the only album that you could listen to and go, "This isn't very good." Um, my number fifteen is Morbid Visions from Whoa. 1986. So their very first album, commercial. Um, very i mean not really <laughs> what is like uh, i'm talking if if like you know your proper like 80s battle vest dude who's like those who's people like, are already yeah. trying too hard anyway and, and <laughs> anyone that anyone that would come and say morbid visions is their favorite sepulcher I'm, I'm just like you are now out of the conversation because you're an idiot <laughs> like you're 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 literally that's you're you're literally a poser because that there's no way now I, I understand that like, if you don't listen to thrash or groovy stuff or anything, you're just a hmm. dude that listens to eighties, you know, proto black metal or, or death hmm. metal. Okay. I could get it that this is the only one you like, and you would say it's your favorite Sepultura album, but comparatively speaking, let's, let's go through this really quick. It's really poorly produced. First yep. off, <laughs> that wouldn't necessarily bother me because like, it's their for it's 86. They weren't mm. a, a band that lived in a place where you could easily have a well-produced fucking album and throw it out there. It wasn't, that's not what no. was going on for them. So I understand that they could have tuned their guitars 
<laughs> they didn't do that. That kind of bothers me a little bit. But then you get to the point that so much of what this is, it sounds like they're just emulating other bands. Like the classic Sepultura sounds not there. Now, mind you, Andreas Kisser's not in the band at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's I'm, I'm assuming that it was fully max driven at this point, like songwriting wise. And they were guys that were they were into Venom and they were into Slayer and all of this stuff. And um, this is the music that came out of them, which is which is totally understandable because they were a really young band. And um, they put together this album, which has some really enjoyable songs on it. Honestly, I love hearing it because I love hearing the beginnings of the band. I love hearing like where it all started. When you're when you're a fan of a band, you always love to hear that. But here's the thing. If I wasn't a fan of Sepultura, I would never make it through this fucking album. It would be <laughs> two, two, three tracks tops, and I'd be like, okay, d- d- does, does it get better? Because it's it's pretty, it's pretty whatever. And um, and to there's be not complete- a smooth edge on it. No. <laughs> no. And and to and to be completely honest, I absolutely love the fact that they ditched the Satan shit real quick because <laughs> There, that for the most part, there's only a few bands that can get away with doing that. Most yeah. bands, if they come out with the say with the Satan nonsense, I'm just like, you, you might as well be singing about LARPing, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. Um, which you basically are LARPing, but um, yeah, th- this album is is in the in the story of Sepultura, I like it outside mm. of that, it's not it doesn't really paint the picture of this band's going to become legendary. Like this is not that album. Mm. Um, There were other bands doing similar music at the time that you could point at and go, that was groundbreaking or that set a standard for things. This really didn't. They they would do that on their next album. So they really quickly got their shit together and, and kind of focused on, on what they wanted to do. Because if you, you know, we'll get to, we'll get to schizophrenia, but on that one, there's already things that are, classic sepultura style things on that album album number two and so yeah. and i think that was a year later so i feel like this was like their early shit they just had to get it out they got it out quickly didn't even tune guitars just just <laughs> just threw everything out there um and then there's it's morbid visions i mean at this point it's a classic because it's sepultura mm. but um to me it's their worst just because it's it's not very good. <laughs> so, so that's my uh, my number 15, Morbid Visions. Here's what I'll say about the artwork of that album is that is one of the coolest band logos I have seen paired with one of the goofiest looking Satans I have ever seen. Like, yeah. I, I look at him and he's got like big... Uh, like Looney Tunes eyes, and I'm thinking, dude, that's not, you're not fucking scary, dude. Like, I don't care if you got like three dudes crucified in like a pit of despair. Motherfucker looks like a character from Family Guy. <laughs> like, what, what, once, once again, they where they lived, they didn't have an Ed Repka just hanging out ready to do artwork. So I yeah. mean, they did what See, they did. Like that, that, I don't, I don't fault them for for what it is because I, I feel like they're there were limitations and they worked within those. So, yeah. Um, well with that, I'm gonna move it over to my number 14. All right. Which is, um, a Lex, a Lex uh, or, or a Lex or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is their uh, second concept album in a row from 2009. Uh, this is based on a clockwork orange and you know, cool idea, like really cool. Only thing is, it's the first album to not have either Cavalera or brother on it. Like Igor is gone now. Yeah. And you can definitely tell that a component is missing and they kind of didn't, I, I don't know. I don't so much want to say that they didn't know how to navigate that so much as how they did it made for a pretty generic modern metal album from a older band. So yeah, Alex one is a pretty crushing intro, you know, Maloko Mesto, uh, frantic thrashing brutality, filthy rot, 
you kind of drop down into this like groovy syncopated kind of thing uh, we've lost you I, I will say like while the drums on this album are played well like i say there really is a missing piece without igor because he had such a unique approach mm -hmm. uh what i do it, yeah they've kind of regressed back from the things i liked about dante so much uh but i'll get to that uh not in this episode i don't think but uh yeah uh where is that a alex 2 is kind of a heavy interlude instrumental uh the treatment is pretty damn heavy again i like the ride symbol work uh, metamorphosis is a groover sadistic values is quite melodic for the most part forceful behavior is a heavy half thrasher Conform has a very, very corn style riff in it, mm -hmm. which was pretty cool. Uh, Alex 3 uh, is another interlude instrumental. The experiment, again, it's, it's like they stepped back from a step in the right direction with the previous album. Um, Strike is, has some pretty plodding grooves. Enough said has a wild solo in it. Uh, Ludwig Van, total curveball to hear this on a Sepultura album, but then yeah. again, it's a concept album. And I feel like this was the was the real catalyst for them to um, explore more symphonic elements on, you know, following releases. Um, Alex 4, I actually thought it was going vaporwave for a second there, <laughs> you know, because there's some like weird synths in there. Yeah. Um, and then finally you get paradox which is a you know thrashed out kind of closer i get what they were trying to do however the the execution to, to my ears didn't really cut it compared to you know the the album that came right before it but i think that is as much an issue of a pretty significant band member leaving as much as it is following up an album uh yeah so if you okay. have anything to add to that because i just kind of went right through that <laughs> no no i i don't yet um the one thing i'm gonna have to say is i uh, i i disagree i i think you're giving um um uh igor a lot of credit that isn't necessarily needed um he's a great drummer um but in in disagreeing with you, I'm literally gonna play the opposite card that you just played. My number fourteen mm. is Dante XX. What is that? What number is that? I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, play, I'm gonna show everyone how dumb I am. XXI XXI. I should I could have looked this up myself, but I've never. I've just always looked called it Dante. I've never I've never really you know worried about the number, but you know. 21. Dante, 21. That would make sense. Yeah. 10, 21, two, two tens 21. and one. Um, so this album is from 2006. And all of the things that you said about Alex, I'm going to say all apply even more so to Dante because it's it's their 10th album. And like you said, first without Igor Cavalera, but, or no, last last with igor cavalera sorry <laughs> it tripped me out there for a second yeah i get I, this literally this period of sepultura everything gets jumbled together for me and i go all right well i think i think i remember what song what album this song was off of um so so dante 21 if that's what it is um is a is a another concept album and this one is uh based on the divine comedy um there's a long explanation for it <laughs> and um it honestly it doesn't the the concept album thing coming from sepultura has gotten kind of tiresome for me um mm -hmm. where i'm just like you know great i i love the i love the description where are the tunes like that's all i care about like like if there, if it's a really interesting concept and it's backed up with a whole bunch of really captivating shit then fine which they did they have done but on this particular case, the concept didn't inspire any new riffs or song ideas because mm -hmm. at this point in 2006, the thing that really drove me away from being 100% into what Sepultura were doing 
Um, I, I would say it's also the same reason I wasn't 100% into what if most of what Max Cavalera was doing is that they were all, for some reason, really confined in the style of riffs they wanted to write. So everything, mm. every album had multiple two note riff things they were always like or something like that. It was all they were all over the place, and and that's perfectly fine. But once you've done five or more albums, hmm. shit starts running together, and you start hearing riffs where you go, "That is a that's literally part of a riff from Roots. That's literally part of a riff from Chaos AD, and, or, or that's just a, a riff they've already done inverted." And so. Hmm. You start to hear things that are just so like run of the mill, like they're just like you said, they're stuck in a rut around this time, and um, it just really annoys me on this album because you know if you're gonna have a concept, you it can't just be something where you have interludes and intros <laughs> and a description, and that's yeah. enough. That's not enough. Um, that being said. Like I said, I got through, I got past the only album I consider they did that was bad. This one, it's another album that if somebody really likes it, like you said, you you you're pretty sure it's in your the next episode for you. I can't fault you for that because there's some good shit on here. There's good shit on all the albums that they've done since hmm. since you know uh, schizophrenia. And um, I mean, there's some good shit on morbid visions. Don't don't <laughs> not, not let me not I'm not going to shit all over that one, but. Um, and, the and black and, metal fans are just going nuts right now. <laughs> and they did, and they did flirt a little bit with strings on on Dante as well. Mm. Um, in fact, yeah. I think I feel like they've ever they may have started that with against something little. I don't know. It, it seemed like they. Yeah. The one thing I can say about Sepultura that you know post Max with the Derek Green era is that they did start to incorporate little things here and there, but sometimes there was not enough of that and there was too much same old same old happening on an album like this where it's like if i feel like this album should be much more special than it is um because hmm. at the end of the day it's just the same th it's the same food with a label that <laughs> boasts different ingredients but then when you taste the food, it tastes exactly the same as the food that they had already been making. It just has a different label on the front of it. <laughs> and um, and also the production for a couple albums here, the their production style, it gets way too thin and compressed and mm -hmm. not enough fucking weight and balls um on uh on, on their stuff with that. They need that. Mm -hmm. Um other than that, it's fine. It's a fine album, it's got some cool shit. You know, it has its moments, as we say, for for albums that we like, but we're, you know, critical on. Um, but really, like the big reason why this one had to go at number 14 for me, I I, I almost feel like like th there needs to be some punishment for coming out and being like, here's this description, <laughs> here's this description of this album. And the description is more interesting than the actual album. And so um, <laughs> that's why it had to go here, because it's just. It, it 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 it's something that I feel like if they did this now, this would be probably a hundred times better <laughs> than this. <laughs> um, but at the time, I think that they, uh, and I don't really know. I, I I from the outside, it seems like Andreas Kisser is the driving force with the ideas and stuff. I'm not sure how much, but you know, it seems like he's the guy kind of pushing things in whatever direction and i feel like at this point they there there are a handful of albums where i think that they had these visions of wouldn't it be cool if we could do this but musically speaking they hadn't broken out of their created bubble yet no. they were still working in this confined little space where they it's interesting because they had progressed and progressed and progressed but then got to a point where they go, all right, this is it. That's it. Leave it, leave yeah. it right here. And then they would poke a little hole and be like, let some strings in here. Okay. Poke that. This is a different kind of song. Poke this here. But like, but then eventually, you know, it just became, you know, too much of the same kind of shit. And there's a lot of that on Dante 21, um, which <laughs> is number 14. So let's, let's move on to, uh, to your number 13. Cool. So my number 13 is, 
nation, which okay. is, you know, to, to me, again, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's very similar to, you know, roar back, but I, I think it has some, uh, so, some more creative choices going on yeah. on it you know mm -hmm. uh you know supple nation is a catchy ass song to open on i will say they open this album well um uh, revolt is a totally crazy thrash attack it's in and out in less than a minute it's a proper like hardcore punk kind of vibe here yeah um border wars has like an alt metal vibe one man army has a lot of melody in it that's a, uh, you that's know. a that's a standout for me on that album. I love that song. I like that song too. Um, Vox Populi, yeah, very tribal feel on this one. That riff is pretty creative, and it actually sounds like it's in a, a major key, which is you know really interesting for a band this heavy. You know, yeah. Uh, the Ways of Faith. There's a lot of vibage going here on you know with the sitar and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Umakura sneaky kind of track that really explodes when it wants to uh who must die very new metal kind of song saga you know again we're still rooted in the roots vibe no pun intended <laughs> yeah <laughs> um tribe to a nation begins with this like kind of reggae dub thing yeah i kind of actually got you know the band skindred yeah yeah i got that sort of vibe from this track uh Politrix, guest appearance from uh, Jello Biafra from Dead Kennedys. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, this album it has these weird tracks that make it kind of endearing at points, even if it is low down on my list. Because I'm like, this is weird. And I like this. You know, this is one of the things that stuck out to me as memorable on this album. It was like, yeah. Okay. That doesn't sound like Derek Green. Oh, it's, it's the dude from Dead Kennedys. Holy shit. But, um, you know, Human Cause. And now another guest appearance from hate breed vocalist Jamie Jasta. Uh, Reject. It's it's I. <laughs> At this stage, you know, it, it's a pretty lengthy album of this style. See, that's the thing. That's the thing that kind of, I think, really hurts groove era sepultura is it kind of feels now this applies to a lot of bands from the you know 90s and yeah. early 2000s is that they saw the runtime of a cd and they were like we want to fill as much of that as possible yeah uh that's not true because it, it, album fatigue is a real fucking thing yeah and this was the era where it was at it's worst. <laughs> I'm pretty sure though a lot of that is record companies because I, exactly. I I think record companies come to them and say, no, no, you have to have at least this amount of material yeah. because it's the no CD besides. world now. Same, yeah. same, same way for like when albums, I don't know if it's still the same way now, but I know for a long time um it, you would put out an album here and then the Japanese version always yeah. needed to be two or three songs longer. Because I yeah, guess in their track. market, that's what they expected. They expected longer albums. Yeah, but yeah. Either way, yeah. it is there. The fatigue is real, mm. especially with this uh, style and length of album. You know, yeah. "Water" is a cool song. There's a lot of indigenous influence here, and then uh, "Valtio" is is a final guest appearance from Apocalyptica, the uh, cello uh, metal dudes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and. It's a cool album, like you say. It they 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 haven't really done anything that you could say, you know, without being like an anti new metal elitist asshole, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's because true. Th there's a lot of people that'll turn around and be like, they fucking sold out with a rise. It's like, how the fuck did they sell out with a rise? I saw someone say that in like the Sepultura forums. It was like, a rise is boring as shit the fuck are you on <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly the... i can't i can't wrap my head around people that don't like roots like that yeah blows me away and because but i know what it is that we, we we run into this a lot there are a lot of people who just listen to music for the genre and mm -hmm. not for the music and so it's too much of like if it doesn't tick the right boxes for this particular genre they've sold out they're washed up they're done um, I don't, I used to like them for their first two albums 
you know, kind of shit because I've so many, and I don't think it's just metalheads. I think it's mm, awful people in general um, <laughs> that, that just, or I don't know why everyone creates all these fucking rules for themselves. I mean, you know, yeah. I didn't get into rock and roll for fucking rules. You know? <laughs> and so um, anyway, you left it, the it, fucking band. <laughs> period exclamation point um anyway um, again, lars has to make an appearance in in he it's been a while since lars showed yeah. up in one of our videos anyway um um what we um set out to um do um <laughs> <laughs> before anybody uh you start joining in um i love lars yeah, we are a pro I love, Lars podcast. I love him as a person and as a drummer and as um, an integral part of Metallica. Um, so you done you done there with uh, um, what one were we nation. on? We are nation. nation yeah, um, I'm going to stay in the same area as you. One you've already talked about. My number thirteen is Roarback okay. from uh, 2003. Uh, their ninth album. Once again, perfectly fine album. Like here's the thing with 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 these albums in this period. Starting with Roarback and I would say going through Kairos, mm. all of these albums, if this was your first Sepultura album, I absolutely get the connection to it because it's, yeah. it's, they're all very solid albums and have some of them, you know, have a lot of memorable shit on them. Mm. Um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going off of Nation. It, it's interesting now that we've, you talked about Nation, I'm talking about Roarback because I believe that. The first two albums with Derek Green, I don't think that they were necessarily doing just the root stuff again. That that style was there, yeah. but they were really trying to throw in as many different ideas and flavors as you could. Now, Nation isn't to me isn't quite as interesting as Against, but hmm. both those albums in a row, if they had continued kind of in a path of experimentation while keeping the core kind of sepulture thing i would have been a lot more on board with it but roarback it's almost like they took a step back and said whoa 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 we, we stop yeah. stop trying to do all this different stuff let's just do straightforward sepulture for the straightforward sepulture fans now i, I do believe yeah. that this was the first one where they weren't this was around the time that like they weren't doing well sales wise like, I think they got dropped or they left Roadrunner or whoever, whatever. I don't know what label they were on, but I think Roarback is when they all of a sudden almost took an indie, you know, label kind of thing because they weren't, you know, especially, you know, in America. I'm sure in, in, in Brazil, they probably, you know, maintained a lot of popularity. But um, I think with Roarback, they did go through a period where it was like, you know, do people even still give a shit anymore? Um, and yeah. people did. And so, um, but I, th I think that with Roarback, I don't know what the thinking was, but they, it's like they, they decided to make an album where they focused in on particular elements of Sepultura. And to me, they're the less interesting elements of Sepultura. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of, once again, there's a lot of two note riffs and, sometimes one note riffs know, which is per know, perfectly know, fine there are some amazing riffs that are that are one note i understand yeah, like domination the middle riff from domination by pantera one <laughs> note so it can be done but once you, when you do that a lot it's like i already said this before it starts to get to the point where things just start running together um and this album is the it like i shit, I shit you not i was writing my notes and i wrote you know, it's just more of the same. And then the yeah. song more of the same started. I was like, that's very appropriate. That's a they, sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but really here to me, they're basically treading water. Mm. And um, I, I think if you're really into the, this style of what they're doing, this album is really good, but there's very little for me to be excited about here. Um, but at least with this one, compared to with Dante, I feel like they promised something that they didn't really deliver. And with Roarback, I don't, they just did it. They did this. Like, here's a basic, here's just bare bones, heavy, groovy, uh, aggressive Sepultura. And um, 
maybe they needed to do that. I don't know, but um, it's not an album I go back to a lot. Um, and um, honestly, I, here's an interesting thing because this one, because Roarback has their cover of Bullet the Blue Sky on it. Mm. Um, I don't, you know, there are some bands that, that cover songs and they, they're really cool. And some of the Sepultura cover songs are so good, I prefer them over the originals. But <laughs> when they later on, when they started doing almost like songs that were too well known, like Bullet mm. the Blue Sky, later on they did Just One Fix by Ministry and they did Firestarter by Prodigy. It gets yeah. to a point where I go, This is not this is not necessary. And you're no. not really bringing anything interesting to the table. I, mean, I guess Bullet the Blue Sky is interesting as a heavier song but to me like especially at this point with them like that being like song number three or four on the album i'm just like oh okay it's that kind of album where they <laughs> they they needed a cover song um or maybe they didn't you know it's you know some people really enjoy u2 i'm not one of them i like a few u2 songs here and there um anyway I don't have anything else to say. It's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Roar Back is my number 13. Uh, moving on to number 12. Cool. We're going to jump forward a few years here now. And I have uh -oh. here, uh -oh. uh, I have for my number 12, the mediator between head and hands must be the heart. Eddie Sparks. Okay. <laughs> um, I will say, I've been a little bit strapped for time lately this this past week, and uh, I listened to a lot of these albums in succession to like you know get through them. And at this point, you know, after Alex and after Kairos, Kairos, uh, Kairos. Kairos, we're not even on Kairos. that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna jump into it. Um, okay. See, this is where things to my ears really get good you know as you said they're, and, they're not a bad album band so, really and, and what changed on this album uh they had a long ass album title <laughs> I, they, I, they it's the first album with eloy uh Ca casa grande on uh drums ooh. and nice. um I'll, I'll 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 talk about this a lot later as in next time, but I think that dude breathed a lot of new life into the band. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's a situation where it may have just been the right timing, but it's a coincidence that this dude, who's a fucking phenomenal drummer, shows up and it's almost like so they it lit a fire under their ass yeah. <laughs> and they just and then they, they haven't looked back at this point but yeah so uh, you know clearly i'm not talking about <laughs> not talking about <laughs> any any of those albums in this episode <laughs> i th i think what it is like i i think it was just like groove fatigue i might have had but there's a yeah. lot of like fast stuff as well later on uh but without further ado let's get to it trauma of war is a violent explosion of a song to start the album with mm -hmm. and the vatican they've got very cinematic over the years and in the 2010s they really took that to you know the most prominence and th this one this so one far. is this one has a is based on something as well you knew that right that it's based on metropolis yeah um, well kind of i i know a lot of sepultura lore i don't know all of it yet I, my my research skills have been a little behind this week. I'll brush up for the next one. <laughs> yeah, I mean once um, once again it's a, it's a it's a concept where if it wasn't explained to you, it probably wouldn't be really really noticeable. So, but anyway, do you want to know? Do you know? Do you want to know what's funny? It's like a, an an assumption I'd made from the album title. I thought, ah uh, no. Are they going to have jumped the shark and done a metalcore album? Like, I thought, <laughs> I thought, you know, that that's such a, you know, I'm not calling Sepultura a metalcore band, but no, like to have a really long title like that is very to, off that. Sort I, of I, thing. I have to be completely honest. When they announced that album title, I was like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but 
you know, it, it's uh, they they get away with it in this case. Yeah, my list turns a corner here. I I enjoy pretty thoroughly everything here on in. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, the Vatican gives me like soundtrack kind of vibes. Really goes brutal when it hits though. Um, impending doom. It's got some doomy grooves in it. Uh, <laughs> Manipulation to tragedy is a cool song. Tsunami. Quite Gojira sort of stuff in this song. You know, mm -hmm. Gojira is very influenced by Sepultura, so go figure. But uh, The Bliss of Ignorance is a chunky one. Grief is a slow burner. The Age of the Atheist. Bit of tambourine action going on in there. Nice. Um, obsessed. It, it, I put Death Metal with sneaky bits. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Lama Al Chaos. Um, cheeky riffage with some brazilian percussion going on something they do very well yeah and uh stagnant state of affairs is pretty much a groove death thrash track to close out on here's where things get good in my list so yeah i have a i have a positive feeling towards this album but the albums above it just hit something hit something for me in a certain way so cool. i'm a I'm gonna let you carry on. <laughs> All right, I, uh, I I touched on this album a little bit um, earlier, but my number twelve is Kai Ross from uh, 2011. No. Um, their twelfth album, and um, the good thing about this one is that there's a, a an improvement in the production style because yes, Dante and Alex were both I could have both been better um, in my mm. opinion. Um, and now they, they would get even better than this production style wise, but at least it's an improvement here. And I would say overall, Kairos is a, it's an enjoyable album. Um, yeah. I, like I said before, the, the covers on here, like, I think the just one fix is, is proper album track. And then the Firestarter one is a, is a, is a bonus track, but both of them are just I, I prefer the Firestarter one over Just One Fix because Just One Fix just sounds like the same song with <laughs> Eric Green doing yeah. vocals. Um, I would say that the riffs on this album are a bit more interesting. They, they're they kind of starting, I, I don't know, breaking away a little bit and being a little bit more adventurous. Um, yeah. But but even with, even with that, this album is too much still stuck in the same Chaos AD roots, were, that, you know, the, the world that was created from that too yeah. much kind of going back to the well in certain respects for things and um that i i have to say this now like that's a big reason why it's been so rough for me with sepultura um over the years and it's because th there's a few things and I, I i guess i guess i'll just use this time to talk about this so and it isn't just Sepultura, but like so last night or the night before last when I saw Sepultura, they they started off, they started the set with the very first track from Quadra and blew the fucking doors off the fucking venue. Yeah. Then they played uh territory. And to be fair, the crowd reacted appropriately and lost their shit, <laughs> but the song something isn't right something does not sound right when they do old songs hmm. and i've grown to really like Derek green as a vocalist i i didn't at first i was i liked what he did in the first couple albums and then i thought maybe they weren't giving him enough to work with even on kairos because now Derek green he does a lot of different things and he's really starting to impress me i'm like oh this guy has got so many things that he can do and does really well and has his own fucking character but yeah. him doing the Max songs, it loses something for me. Now, to be fair, Max doing the Max songs now also loses something for me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know where to go because I'm not in the Max camp or the Sepultura camp because I don't, I know what happened. We'll, we'll probably get into that on the next episode about what happened when they split. But yeah, there's been equal things where I occasionally will hear something from Soulfly or Cavalier Conspiracy or whatever and just go, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I'll, but the, in equal terms, I'll hear another song where I go, oh my God, why? <laughs> and 
And so, so at least with Sepultura, there wasn't really any of that except for, except for live when they're doing songs from that era. And, and there's two criticisms that I have for them as a live band. Number one, I just I don't do, I, I just, there's something really missing with the old songs. Number two, they need a second guitar player. They absolutely need one. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. If they if if on if on all of the newer albums, whenever Andreas does a solo, there was no other guitar behind him, then that would be part of the sound. I'd be like, okay, I see what they're doing now. But no, they still have a rhythm guitar on the fucking albums. Sometimes they don't, but most of the time they do. And so yeah. when he when he when he plays it live, especially going into the solo on territory, so much aggression from that song went missing that I was just like, okay. Yeah. Um, and so I, th- I think they should get one, get another second guitar player. Number two, I had this idea yesterday. Here's a, a little bit of a tangent. I have an idea. And um, because I feel the exact same way about Alice in Chains. I love what Alice in Chains are doing now. I hate it when they play old songs. I wish they would just <laughs> play stuff from Black is Way to Blue until now. So I thought of, I thought of an idea um, for a tour. It doesn't necessarily have to be with Sepultura and Alice in Chains, but Sepultura, you know, one of the, one of the, you know, let's, let's go with Sepultura because that's who we're talking about. The, the tour is going to be called the Out With The Old Tour. And okay. it's going to be a band like Sepultura doing only stuff from the modern era of their band, leaving behind all of these, oh, we have to do this as a crowd pleaser type shit. Now, the real fans, this is for the real fans. Um, they, they, they don't play any old shit. They also, this, this makes the tour title even better. They also bring out a handful of other bands from back in the day who are also old. They're going out with the old. So now Ah. now are they saying out with the old songs? We're also going out on tour with some other old fucks. And so I just think that would be a cool idea. You know, like, like like, Alice in Chains probably couldn't get away with it because I think people i don't think people adore their newer stuff as much but i think sepultura could totally get away with it they could totally get away with playing only shit from from against until quadra that's a lot that is a lot of content they could do easily do a two-hour show of all sorts of badass shit and and that and just leave that other stuff behind at least for a tour you know I can't help but feel like you've constructed this elaborate ruse so that they can bring you, old head, on tour with them. I didn't so- even think about that. <laughs> that. There you go. All right, Sepultura. Here's here's what I'm saying to you. Out with the old. You only play stuff. Derek Green is that Derek Green is the vocalist on. That's all I will accept. Um, we bring out some other old bands from from the time. You know, I don't know. Let's bring out Prong. Or uh, you know some cool that that's it's run the gamut. Let's do th- yeah. something that's real thrashy, something that's more groovy, a big old package, and it's going to be presented by yours truly. You know what? I'm, you know I'll, I'll I'll have a small fee because I have to take off work to go do it, <laughs> but I'll be it'll be a competitive fee. You know I won't I won't I'm not going to you know nickel and dime me to death. Because all I'm going to do is come out and introduce the bands. Nobody knows who the fuck I am. <laughs> um, but for those who do, it'd be like out with the old, that's three ways that that could work. And I, I owe it. I owe it all to you, sir. When we roll, when we roll through England, um, we're going to have you come on board as well. That'll be, it's, it's going to happen. All right, guys. There, there's going to be a dude in the audience that recognizes you. Is it? I know this dude. That's that young balls, dude. That's your, that's your, that should be your nickname. Name. Old head and young balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, anyway, so yeah, so that, that was, <laughs> that's me just getting off on uh, on the Kairos thing because I just, um, especially now with the last few albums that Sepultura have done, I, they they've to me they've now gotten to the point where they don't need those old albums anymore. They and mm. if and and so I think it would be nice for at least a tour to have them separate and just because I, because I think I may, might've lasted longer at the show. If I thought that they were going to play a whole lot of tracks from different albums with Derek green, but I started to think about it and I go, okay, they're going to play Arise probably. 
maybe even dead embryonic cells. I don't know. Maybe they'll probably play refuse resist. Pro- and there's all these things where I go, Oh, they're going to play the, they're going to play troops of doom. I, I don't know. And so it was all these <laughs> things where I go, all right, I'm not, it, I, I, you know, I'm tired. I got to get home to my family. So peace out. <laughs> so that, was, <laughs> that was the show. But anyway, Kairos, once again, perfectly fine album, still a quality album. And if it was your first Sepultura album, um, or one that has some sort of special place in your, in, in your heart. I totally understand it, but um, they did, they did so much better. Honestly, they got, you're going to, I only have one more that I think I have like major critiques about. Hmm. And then you're, you're, you're essentially getting to the point where like they've done so much good shit originally and now. Um, but Kairos is just one of those ones where it just kind of falls too much in the middle where I go, eh, it's got some good shit, got some shit that's kind of run of the mill, um, but, you know, still, still a pretty good album. So there, there you go, my number 12. Fair enough. I am going to jump right off of you with this because it's my number 11. As All well. right, young balls, let's do it. Hell yeah. Uh, so Spectrum is a pretty cool riff. Uh, Kairos ate some killer grooves in the title track. Mm-hmm. Relentless. I, I think this album is a step up in quality from Alex in terms of like, you know, definitely in the production. So I think that's what tipped it over the edge for me. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, it definitely feels like they got a little bit of fire in them again. Um, so 2011 is an interlude type thing. Uh, then you get just one fix, obviously the ministry cover. Yeah. Uh, dialogue is a really cool guitar solo. Uh, or has a really cool guitar solo rather it's not just a guitar solo <laughs> no, uh, it's a very cool song also yeah uh, speaking of cool songs Mask is a cool song mm-hmm. uh, 1433 is another interlude type thing Seethe is a gnarly track Born Strong has some really cool grooves and harmonies in there that are just killer uh, Embrace the Storm is heavy as balls <laughs> as my young balls <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh uh 5772 yet another interlude type thing uh no one will stand is a crazy fast song that's the thing i will say about these like with dante onward i mean i know they did fast stuff on like nation against and roarback but they were always they weren't really thrashy they were a a lot more in the punk vein than they are yeah thrash so to hear them return to more of like a instead of a like yeah I, I like that you know and the thing i liked about like really old school sepultura was the fact that it was thrashy but they did vary it up like there's groovy yeah. stuff there's groovy stuff as early as um schizophrenia like yeah. you say there is definitive sepultura elements there they're just a lot tighter um where was I? Stru- uh, no one will stand as crazy fast song. Structure violence, um, as is, um, is a heavy, vibey, and groovy track. Uh, 46, 48 is one last little interlude in there. Uh, it's a it's a cool album. It's an up as opposed to a down, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Which brings us to the top 10. N- no, I'm at... I'm at- 11. You still have, you've still got your 11. Yeah, I I've got 11. Don't, I was like, that was like, all of a sudden, I'm like, did, did, did something happen? Did I forget something? Um, yeah, I'll quickly go through, I'll quickly <laughs> go through mine because you've already talked about it. My uh, number uh, 11 is Alex from 2009. Um, really, I mean, really, this is the last one that I think I have legitimate complaints about. Um, and, uh, it's another concept album, obviously, Clockwork Orange. We talked about it. First album without Igor Cavalera, which in my opinion, I don't think it made that big of a difference because to me, this album is superior to Dante 21. Um, although the, the production is still thin and compressed and it kind of bums me out because it should be mm-hmm. more full sounding, but it is it is what it is. There's a lot of a lot of albums around that time all had and still do some, you know, a lot have that fucking, I don't know why everyone's okay with that. I don't know what band is in the studio and they hear a really thin compressed. I mean, maybe they're not listening to it next to anything else. And so they go, yep, that's good. And I'm always just like, no, like don't play something else next to it and hear like how it actually sounds because it's, especially for metal, that's just, it, it kills it for me. Um, 
So to me, this is a, even though like it's, it's a concept album where I, the, the concept is a thing where it, it doesn't necessarily grab you. It's more of like, well, if you know that's what it is, then you'll catch on to it. Um, but still a pretty interesting album. But um, songwriting wise and riff wise, in the actual meat of the songs, there's still a little bit too much of the same kind of thing going on riff wise and stuff. Um, there's some really cool ideas on here. Um, and uh, I really think at this point, um, and I think even on Kairos a little bit, they, they, it, I, I, it gets kind of aggravating with the the limitations that they seem to have as a band, whether it's self imposed or not. Um, mm-hmm. They've broken out of that, but even on this, like you know, it's it's cool to hear them break away here and there, uh, you know, with an interlude or with you know, like on Ludwig Van, with like literally having strings and everything, you know, behind them um, doing this Beethoven fucking music yeah um, that sounded that sounded really uh beethoven classy fucking music beethoven <laughs> fucking you know friedrich fucking chopin you know <laughs> um anyway uh <laughs> I'm just imagining you walking out on stage at like an like a fucking symphony and you've come on to like introduce it and it's like <laughs> they just they're just playing classical make some fucking noise for <laughs> mozart <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's what you know i mean like a lot of those guys were the rock stars of their day and they mm-hmm. ju- there just wasn't a at least like not not that i know of there wasn't a person that came out to hype up the crowd so um, <laughs> but yeah anyway um I, I i like this album because i feel like the ideas came out better overall um but at this point it's it's kind of like me you know giving them a trophy for just trying their best um when <laughs> and i think that's what got so annoying with me uh, with this band for a long time is that i felt like they could do a lot better and and i don't know what it was and um whatever it was they broke out of it uh but this is still a, a quality album for me and um it's this this one is actually one that's grown on me cuz in the in the beginning I, it kind of was tiresome to me and didn't really deliver kind of the way that I feel about Dante, but Dante hasn't grown on me at all. This one has. Hmm. Um, I just feel like it, it, it needed to be more ambitious than it is. And um, they would end up being more ambitious, uh, but not yet. So that, that's my number 11, which now brings us into the top 10 Sepultura albums. Cool. Got a little bit of damage control there. We're all good. <laughs> We're back on back on track, people. Uh, so yeah, my number ten is against. All right. So this is the first album with Derek Green, and uh, it does it is stylistically somehow very rootsy, mm-hmm. but also not because there are tracks on here that maybe go. Oh, well, that wasn't on there, but um, yeah, let's let's dive right in. Uh, in stark contrast to um, Roots, which opened very groovy and slowly, Against opens with this like blast of punky stuff to open yeah. with, with title track. Uh, Choke immediately comes back that we're still doing the groove thing though. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So it kind of sets this tone of okay where are we headed uh rumors that's a it's, fucking great one yeah and it, again it feels like a more it, it's like a less cerebral roots in a way where it's like they upped the punk factor <laughs> you know in a strange yeah. way um old earth that riff is really groovy definitely yeah. 1998 year of our lord which means me, uh, I was born <laughs> in 1998. Yeah. Uh, flip, floaters in mud. There's a little bit of CD skip trickery at the end, uh, you know, very of its time. Mm-hmm. Uh, boycott, boycott, fucking cool song. Uh, Tribus, 
you know, it's a sort of thing they explored on roots and again they've they've brought out here it's like oh we've still got some of the tribal things going on yeah uh common bonds is a doomy heavy one uh foe is this like heavy instrumental uh, reza is another punky one you know i will say that what this album has is that it's a bit more varied tempo wise than roots yeah because with with roots i feel as though the way it it sat in kind of a zone was a creative statement because yeah. there's like there's still stuff on chaos ad like biotech is godzilla that's really fucking fast and yeah. thrashy whereas roots was like not a rejection of thrash but like an an embrace of slower tempos to say hey these are really cool too yeah but i'll get to, i'll get to roots um anyway unconscious there's a very king nothing guitar effect going on in the breakdown. I immediately thought they heard load and they thought that sounded cool. Um, <laughs> <Do> we, <laughs> I mean, maybe. Yeah, it's like Kamai Tachi, I, th- I think, is sneaky groover. Drowned out is a fast groover. <laughs> Hatred aside is some more fast stuff. And then T3 Ursa Millennium. Tercer Millennium. Am I saying that right? I fuck. I have known. I don't know. That's literally oh, a God. song title that I've looked at so many times and just went, "All right, it's the one that starts with T at the end." <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the chorus to guitars on this. They sound really cool. Um, basically, it made the top ten. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a it's a really really good album. Um, over to you. I would. Yeah, um, I'm not going to talk about that one yet. But but it's funny that that so. I know that there are probably some people watching that are just like, oh man, this is, you know, let's just, let's just put all the Derek Green stuff in the second half. Um, so I'm going to break. Um, we did talk about more of visions and now we're going to talk about another one with Max. Um, I'm actually Ooh. putting um, a, a, a number 10. So this one, this one moved around a little bit, but the more that I thought about it, um, it, it has to go here. Uh, my number 10 is schizophrenia from Ooh. 1987, which okay. is the second Second Sepultura album, first with Andreas Kisser, um, and quickly turning to thrash. Like they, mm. they decided that they were going to lean on the thrashy thing, and like that's what they were doing. Um, and there are some like that. Like I said earlier, like they're already on this album. There are riffs that you hear them and go, well, "That's Sepultura." Like yeah. that's it. Sounds like Sepultura. Some of it is more like of its time and isn't quite as unique as they would become um but it's it's got a great raw energy to it the production has always been really weird to me because the toms sound funny and i don't know the technical term for why it does it why they sound like there's they sound very they sound almost like high pitched when i when i was like their toms they're supposed to be low right but it's <laughs> But I'll tell always, you what that is. What is 1987. <laughs> <laughs> but it almost sounds like they're like he's hitting like these these toms made out of like little bubbles filled with water. And it's like, <laughs> <in> the, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, there's a lot of cool riffs on this. It's the beginning of the Sepultura sound. And honestly, this is the one thing that makes me because I don't know, and honestly, I don't trust anybody's anybody's viewpoint at this point on this so was the sepultura sound that we the things about them that are like pure yeah that's sepultura is that all thanks to andreas kisser and is this is it appropriate that this has been his baby ever since um i i have some thoughts further thoughts on that that i think we'll get to on the next episode because they'll be more appropriate but just the fact that he shows up and then all of a sudden, it, they they've really gotten their shit together here. Um, yeah. They would get they would get their shit way more together on the next album, in my opinion. But um, it's a very strong album from a hungry young band, and you can hear it. Um, and uh, and I think a prob- I think something that really kind of um, shined a really big light on the quality of schizophrenia as an album compared to other things is that it gets to a point where, and, and this is, I, 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 th- this is some people are okay with this, but I think it takes away from the album that it, 
it gets on, on the on the later versions of it there's a re-recorded version of troops of doom which was recorded in 1990 not in 1987 yeah. and so when that comes on it really goes oh they would become like a way better band than this <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just interesting it really good it really shows you oh they're still having some growing pains here with sch schizophrenia but already like on the right path they're already you know like they're like this is a fucking quality album and a classic um, yeah. And it's one of those albums that if somebody says this is their favorite Sepultura, I would not fault them for it. I'd be like, yeah, it's, you know, if you're, if that's what you're, if you're in for the more raw thrashiness um, sound, you know, Sepultura style sound, then this is, this is about as, as good as you get with the, the raw, you know, thrashiness. They get a little more polished as they go on, but mm -hmm. yeah, great album. I just think that, um, Putting this all, putting all the Mac stuff up at the top, it 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 it's kind of to me. It, it doesn't really, I don't know. It says a lot about somebody when they completely just draw a line and go, oh, no, none of the, none of this other stuff was any good. There are some bands where I can clearly draw a line and go, all the shit, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I draw a line after one hot minute, and every everything, I'm like, nah, nah. But in this particular case, especially the last few albums from Sepultura, if you're not on board with what they're doing and you still think that everything that Max was involved in is better, then I, I, I don't know. It's a little, it, it, to me, it's a little, and I'm not referring to you, Eddie. I'm referring to people out there. That's um, okay. <laughs> um, I don't. I'm one of them. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I just think, I just think that it's not fair because they, they really, especially, be, you know, the, yeah. you know, the beginning of the of the Derek Green era and, and and now what they're doing, I think that there's so much quality stuff there. And they really like, you know, to be completely honest, you know, I, I, actually, I'll get to this in, in later. But when they came out with uh, against, I've got opinions about what was going on um, in the world of Sepultura and, and surrounding worlds. But with Schizophrenia, I think that they did so much better than this album and Quality wise, not just production, but songwriting, performances, everything, even in the Derek Green era, I couldn't let this be any higher than 10, even though it's a classic. So that's my number 10, Schizophrenia. Cool. Um, one thing I will say about that album is that I wish I, that there's part of me, I know it's kind of cartoonishly metal and a bit maybe less tasteful than the iconic Sepultura logo that would be on beneath the remains and for the most part onward. Yeah. But there's just something about that early Sepultura logo that just speaks to my ape metalhead brain as yeah. yes, pointy spiky letters. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. There's that thing of like, I, I remember someone once said to me, how to make like a, a classic band logo. They said, if it wouldn't be a public health concern to build this as a sculpture in a very public area, it it's not metal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it can be, but yeah. Yeah. It's gotta, That's... it's gotta it's either spiky ends or it's gotta have that look like it's really heavy. Like if yeah. it drops out of the sky, it's going to crush a motherfucker like that. Yeah. <laughs> like either one of those things. That's a successful metal uh, logo. Hell yeah. So let's go for number nine. Number nine. My, my, my number nine is Machine Messiah. I'm, it's I'm a good sorry. album. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a good fucking album. And I, I, I love it. And I really love, like, the, the thing that struck me about this one was the artwork. Like, right out of the gate, I saw it and I thought, holy shit, that came out now. And I mean that in a good way. I mean yeah. it's in, like, old school metal artwork is fucking badass. Especially stuff like Beneath the Remains, uh, Arise, Chaos AD, that sort of stuff. Love yeah. that. So to see this sort of thing pop up again, I'm like... Oh yeah, my I'm, eyes I'm so enjoy this. I'm so happy like, that we made it through that era. You know, oh, as much as I as yeah. much as I love, you know, a lot. I love a lot of '90s metal, artwork wise. '90s into the 2000s, it just got Ooh. so tiresome of 
here's an out of focus picture of a bag or some shit like that. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. God fucking damn it. Where is it? Cause that's, that was one of the things that made metal so awesome when you were young is going to the record store and seeing an album cover and you go, this is fucking badass. I'm going to buy yeah. this. I don't even know who this band is. And <laughs> I feel like we've come back to that now. Only now it, there's a lot of people, you know, getting really badass artwork for an album. That's just like everything else and not very unique at all. But in this particular case, um, the album cover um, matches what's on it, in my opinion. Yes. And here on in, nothing but killer vibes. L uh, like I say, it does kind of as well, sonically, it stays in the modern realm, but it does reintroduce a real emphasis on like speedy sections, you know? Like yeah. that's what I liked about really old Sepultura, you know? Because... It was like they would have like a bird sort of bit, and then immediately follow it with like that sort of stuff. Fucking love that because the tempos in like Beneath the Remains and Arise era all over the place. It's such yeah. an interesting listen, and that I feel is back. That's the big thing that turned me off of like roots to a certain point era sepultura because yeah. i feel like they they camp out so much in the mid pace zone that there's not really a push and pull yeah it's very it, samey for, for want of a better word so yeah uh, machine messiah is a very grand way to open a record with the you know that title track is just whoa this is yeah. huge mm -hmm. i am the enemy is a wild punky thrasher phantom self crushing heavy track with a lot of moving parts there's thrash elements groove elements very cinematic orchestra stuff going on yeah uh aletheia is a admittedly roots-esque track uh iceberg dances are very... but the thing is it doesn't bother me because it's it... sorry i know I, I jumped back a little bit there i know you're, you okay. said ice, you said iceberg dance and i'm like yeah, yeah. Iceberg <laughs> my brain's dance. already there <laughs> yeah like it's a very very prog type track but it, you know that's the thing yeah. i have i have nothing against there being roots like songs i agree what, yeah what i want is that to be sandwiched between two absolute thrashers and then have a proggy one and then see this is the variety that I feel has been missing from Sepultura during the 2000s era, you know, with a few exceptions. But, you know, Iceberg Dances, as I said, I'm camping out on Iceberg Dances here. I need to move on. Sworn Oath uh, is basically symphonic death metal, which is something I never expected Sepultura to do, and yet it makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. uh, resistant Parasites, Low Chunky Groover, Silent Violence, uh, I mean, that sounds like an 80s thrash band name now that yeah. I say it out, out loud. Silent Violence. That would be a pointy name band. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see it now. They're all wearing white sneakers. Like yeah. Uh... <laughs> and they're all making this face. Yeah. <laughs> they, prob they probably have jean jackets. Yep. That band <laughs> exists out there now. So, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Vandal's Nest. Is absolutely pounding thrash uh, cyber god heavy ass shit on this one chosen skin some more thrashy groovy stuff and then ultra seven no uta like i love that they did this i'm all for covering like cheesy tv show themes because it's just like it, it, it's it, we've we've said it before on this show like i also want bands to have a sense of humor sure. even no matter no matter how serious they can be, I want them to be able to turn around, you know, and bust out a fucking cover of uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers theme or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, Machine Messiah is a, is a beautifully aggressive and varied yeah. piece of art. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we've come full circle and I'm happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I, I I I I like that album a lot. It's um, I'm not going to talk about it right now. Um, my number okay. nine is uh, the 2001 album Nation, which is the second with Derek Green, and uh, their eighth album overall. Um, so this 
So at this point, I still really like this album, but you know, they're continuing the more groovy Sepultura, you know, which well produced, it's well performed. Um, yeah. it's got cool riffs and cool parts and a lot of energy, and it's and it's kind of going off of what they did with against, but I think at this point the the cool unique parts are less on this album than they are on against um while i still really like this album um i feel like they're i don't really know what what to you know blame it on um it just feels not it's still if like if it had come out first and then against then maybe i could be on board because it's that would feel like a progression this one while still being a great album feels like not much they're not moving forward very much but that being said there's still mm -hmm. a lot of cool songs in this album and um the thing that they were it's like weird how they went they they started off on the first couple albums with Derek green where they were trying things kind of out of the norm here and there and to me that's when sepultura that's what makes sepultura such a great band overall um if they had made five albums in a row, like if they had made Beneath the Remains and then Arise, and then their next album also sounded like Beneath the Remains and Arise, I, I probably wouldn't look at them in the same light that I do now. They're such a great band because of the progression from Beneath to Arise to Chaos to Roots and beyond. And I feel <laughs> like with with Against and with Nation, well, not with, not with Nation, but with Against, I feel like there was at least a little bit of a push forward. With Nation, I just feel like it's not, um, they started to tread water and then all of a sudden they kind of just started playing too much in the, in a really shallow pool, uh, yeah. for a little while. Um, but yeah, um, there's just something that keeps it from completely clicking, um, for me in this album, but I do, I, this is an album that I, I've, I listen, I still listen to quite a bit. It is one that sometimes it pops up and I'm like, oh yeah, this fucking album's great. Um, but I think with this one, it, it does start doing that thing where there's some uh, riffs that sound kind of similar to things that they had already done, um, you know. Uh, and I think sometimes this album has parts where something will happen in a song and I go, oh, and then the part following <laughs> it, I'll go, oh, OK, like it doesn't it doesn't deliver on all fronts like I feel like they they could do. Um, and it drags a little bit, but um, the interesting thing about this album to me and listening to these, you know, cause I had heard all of these albums, you know, varying number of times over the years, but listening to them in a row, once I got to nation, I was like, there's nothing about this album that makes me feel like they're going to be a band that continues on for seven more albums. Like it, mm. I don't know why this one feels like maybe they could have started really running out of steam. And I guess you could say that they did, um, but then just sort of dissolve. Uh, but they didn't, they stuck with it. And um, um, yeah, still a good album. Um, I just think that, uh, it was funny. I said, I don't really have any complaints. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm trying, it's, it's almost because like you, you've said it before, like we get nitpicky at having to figure out like why we play something somewhere. Yeah. Um I can uh I can um effectively <laughs> and honestly say that now at number eight, I now it's now like I gotta really nitpick in order to like explain my order. Yeah. <laughs> so um <laughs> that's our last then we get we're on to the last album of this episode for our, our bottom eight sepulture album. So uh take it away, sir. Okay, this might be a bit controversial. Uh, depending on what you come to Sepultura for. Uh, seeing as how acclaimed this album is, one would think it would make it to the following episode. Yeah. However, for me personally, and if we were doing this where it was the bottom seven, I would consider this, you know, in the realms of top albums. Okay, yeah. But I... I I listened to it and for a long time I've had things about it that prevent it from rising the ranks and that is I'm hyping this up because it's the last last album of the episode I had to go for Roots at number eight 
Oh man. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's good. It's like I said, it's good to, for us to look at things this way. Don't just throw all of the Mac stuff in a row. Yeah. And uh, people liked this en masse. So it's good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, pe people so, did not people. There were a lot of people that did and do not like this. <laughs> well, well here's, here's the thing, right? I, I'm coming at this from like a retrospective um, angle because a, I wasn't alive when Roots came out. Yeah. And like I'm I'm viewing it now through the eyes of someone who grew up, you know, I didn't really hit adolescence until Metalcore was on its, you know, second wave. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. terms of what's popular in metal. So Roots for a long time, you know, growing up, it kind of became like the industry standard of what metal is now and it's low end focused slower heavy heavy riffs than um up tuned tremolo picking yeah uh, and so you know gr growing up when i did what roots is had become the norm whereas okay. when roots came out i can see the thrash bands being like or the sorry the thrash fans turning mm -hmm. around and saying what the fuck happened here? Like, well, they 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 had already said that with KSED. so that yeah. But but with the, honestly, for somebody who I was a really big fan when this album came out, it wasn't an immediate thing. Like, it was immediate to me that it was a statement because yeah. you you listen to just the the song "Roots Bloody Roots" starts, and you're just like, oh man, they that is tuned that is a tuned down fucking guitar right there, and yeah. um. And everything about it, it was it was an album that took a lot of listens to really sort of wrap my head around, which it's nowadays that might seem like a funny thing to say about this album. Um, but it really was a thing where it, sonically speaking, me and my friends at the time, we were all big on like like all of the for some reason, everything about it, because they because they were so, they were a band that was so um they use so much different kinds of like percussion and stuff and then they made yeah. this this album that th a really big character in the album is rhythm like the the groove yeah. of the song and so there was a whole lot of us like listening to things and just going like man this drum part right here or the way that this the way that the riff goes right here even though at this part it's just you know, they're getting into like one, two note riff, you know, area. Um, so there was a whole lot of like picking that apart. Like how, how is something that is this sounds this simple also seeming this complex at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was, that's, that was the thought for me. And it's in it, you know, it quickly grew on me and became one that I really love. So. I've, I've also in the past kind of considered, and I, I know I've mentioned it on the show, I consider the mid nineties, the era of the grower album, because yeah. so many albums came out during this time that I found myself, you know, listening to where it takes a couple listens for it to set in. Cause there are, yeah. there are contributing factors, you know, album length, everybody went nuts for, um, you know, it being the CD, uh, and this is a, this is a long album. Um, yeah. I mean, it's what seventy four minutes. Yeah, that's um, a long one. Which, which is you know pretty much the the limit before it starts getting compressed. But yeah, so without further ado, let's let's dive on into roots, huh? Let's yeah, pull these yeah. roots out. Uh, so uh, roots, the title track is a metal anthem to this day. Even yeah. even my even my nan knows it. Uh, <laughs> Attitude is a new metal -y groover. Yeah. Cutthroat is a sneaky new metal groover. <laughs> Dude, cut cutthroat is a is a throat like you know, throw everything off the table <laughs> kind of <Yeah. laughs> song for me. It's just like that thing is like that is a perfect getting out aggression song. Yeah, it is just so fucking good. It really is. And it, well, then after that you get Ratamahata. Then yeah. like very cool song. That's utilizing the most brazilian influences so far because it's like wow but know, that was the, that's really... what was so exciting about sepultura up to that point yeah. is that they would throw songs on on 
on, you know, it, it started with KSAD, but with Ar Arise, they had little things here and there, but it wasn't necessarily the entire song. But with KSAD yeah. and with Roots, they would throw songs at you where you go, this is like nothing they've done before. Yeah. And that's why it's so great to me. That I, I think from an innovation standpoint, this is probably their, you know, magnum opus where people would turn around and say, this is the culmination of like, like it's like the planets aligning this album because yeah. you've got, you know, their Brazilian heritage, they're a metal band. They're they're on album number six. They go fuck it. Let's blend our two worlds together and show you know show the rest of the world how we roll over here. Yeah. And then you know you got breed apart is a rhythmic percussive track. You know the whole album is rhythm based mostly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sh straight hate that riff when it kicks in is. Mm -hmm. Um. You know spit is an up tempo track, uh, and then you get look away, uh, which has a guest appearance does. from Mike Patton and Jonathan Davis and DJ Lethal, which is really, really cool. That's a standout for me on this album, you know, mm -hmm. being such a big fan of Mike Patton and Faith No More and all of his projects and all of the side projects of Faith No More, really, because, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Dusted. Now, here's the point where I start to get a little fatigued. Okay. Because we've hit the mid we've hit the halfway mark and the big thing i liked so much about chaos ad and again to an extent arise and beneath the remains was its mix of precision of it, the precision of thrash yet the danceable grooves and tempos that they chose to play at sometimes mm -hmm. and like a lot of this very long album relies much more on vibe than songs to my ears sure and i it that does in a way make it like a sit down and experience it kind of listen but there are points in the album where i think to myself fuck dude i i may need to like have a little intermission here um but yeah and then you get born stubborn the faster tracks on here are also still very new metal -y. Yeah. So I find this album does become pretty samey at the halfway mark. Uh, and at that point, just... the, the term new metal didn't even exist. At this yeah, point, it's so. very, very early stages of I think what it, would become I think that. at this point, Korn had two albums out. Yeah. Um, they, they had a big following, but they hadn't yet broken big with Follow the Leader. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It's, it, yeah. We're, I mean, we're looking at this like 20 26 years on yeah now and it's yeah uh jasco has some like cool acoustic instrumental stuff going on uh it's sorry a, a tribal jam it varies the vibe up a bit which at this stage in the album you definitely need <laughs> mm -hmm. um ambush the groove on this song is crushing endangered species is more tribal groovage uh dictator shit <laughs> is a is a fast hardcore style track and then finally you get this like 13 minute uncut like canyon jam it's called and it's really cool to hear this because they definitely like sampled parts of all of this throughout the album mm -hmm. and it's cool that they left this on here yeah as like hey this is like the uncut stuff that we use so, so really i suppose even if you did shave that off of the album the album is still technically an hour long yeah <laughs> you know yeah. so it is a very lengthy record and it's also I, I, it's I, also a bit when it comes to the length of this album it also is a bit it's like it doesn't really let up it lets up every once in a while but it's pretty brutal it's it, it can be exhausting at times yeah and like i say i like this album but i feel as though they went very hard on one thing yeah and it tends it, it makes it an album that i have to be in the mood for rather than i just see it on the shelf and i'm like oh I'll stick that on the turntable today yeah. it has to be like it, it's almost like something i have to prepare for it's yeah. like it's it's like your friend saying 
uh, hey, do you want to come over to my house and watch all three Lord of the Rings movies in a row? Granted, it's a much more extreme yeah. version of that, but from an album perspective, I think to myself, fuck, man, uh, have I got time? <laughs> have I got time to <laughs> sit down and listen to Roots? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously I do, but it's one of those things, like I say, I have to be in the mood for. Yeah. And that's why Roots is my number eight. Awesome. Over to you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna. I'm Here's gonna, old head with the weather. <laughs> I'm gonna. Um, it's gonna be like a little connection here because my number eight is against from 1998, which is. Okay. You know, we just talked about the last one of the Max Cavalera era, and now the very first one of the Derek Green era, um, which cool. was the seventh album. Now, I, I I'll, I'll bring this up just because we're talking about you know. I mean, obviously, Sepultura around this time. Um, I think several months before this album came out, the first Soulfly album came out. And the 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 short my my short opinion is that Sepultura won in that in that respect for the two albums <laughs> with a better quality album. That that being said, I really there's a there's an energy to that first Soulfly album that it is really infectious and a lot of fun mm. but that's the thing that's so weird about this first soulfly album is it to me that feels like it's it's a fun album it's a fun metal album there's nothing to even though there's some serious stuff on it it always gives me this like it's a like it's a it's like a groove metal party or a new metal party you know yeah. and whereas against feels way more focused and more like they got something to prove. Like that's the whole vibe of against is like, we got shit to prove, but I think Soulfly is just ma it, Max being Max. Hey, you kind of, you kind of expected this from me. Here, here yeah. you go. Um, but there's cool shit there, but with against like, I, I don't, I feel like don't people don't people, I feel like people don't, there you go. Um, talk about this album in the respect that I feel like it deserves because you know, they they could have easily just started an entirely different band because it does feel kind of mm -hmm. weird because at this point, you know, the the unfortunately at that point, and it may it may be due to you know uh management of the band, which at that before that was Max's wife. Um if you remember right. I mean, you weren't alive then or you were born at this point but before that um it almost seemed like the way that they were portrayed was hey here's max cavalera's band sepultura you know like it was right he was yeah. like the star of the show or that's how it was presented and um so it, i could i could see it being kind of awkward to be like, oh, we're going to continue with the name Sepultura without the guy that's been on the fucking magazine covers <laughs> and shit. Yeah. Um, uh, so when they when this when this came out at first, I was a little bit hesitant because the same way that I was to bring up another band that changed singers again. Uh, when Alice in Chains first announced they were putting out a new album with a different lead vocalist, I went, nah, no, that's all right. <laughs> But in both respects, with this one and with Black Gives Way to Blue, they proved me wrong because I feel like this is a really cool al album with a lot of really memorable tracks and things. Once again, like there, there are songs on this album where I go, they at that point had never done anything exactly like this. Hmm. And that's why I liked it. And I really liked... Um, Derek's vocal approach. I, I, I will say with a lot of the albums that are lower down on my list, I think I already said this, that I feel like they didn't give him enough to work with. Cause I feel like no. he's a way better vocalist than he was being utilized as the first couple albums against a nation. I feel like he's got more to do, but it seems like it got less and less where all of a sudden they were like, Oh, we have these big concept albums, but Derek, you just keep doing the same shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so even though they would be like, we're going to incorporate strings on this, or we're going to have all these interludes, and we're going to do a concept album, they're still just like, you just bark these lyrics on this, <laughs> on this song. But he has, as we've found over the years, he's got so much more to offer as a vocalist. 
and I think on against it really shows um, that right out of the gate, he's he has his own unique thing and sounds great. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of bangers on this album. Um, I really feel like I said this before with Nation that if they had continued a progression of trying different things and their sound had expanded to a point where we we look back on Roots and Against and go, oh, remember when they were doing groove stuff? But they got kind of stuck after this album. But I really think that Against this is such a strong album that I almost feel bad that it's in this episode and not in the next one. Um, but to you know how I, I felt about roots <laughs> yeah i I, I, I talked about this earlier about how this is like a roller coaster of emotions for me because um we'll in the, in the next episode we'll be talking about the more recent sepultura albums and those are ones where i go th- finally i feel like they've come around to where they're putting out stuff where i go you don't you no longer need to compete with what you did mm-hmm. in the past it's not necessary um and not that they necessarily, I'm sure, I mean, they're, they're, it's always going to be like the ghost of Max in the band because people can't shut the fuck up about it. Um, and, I, and I'm over that. I, you know, if they, if they, for some reason, reunited, I'd go see them because that's fucking legendary right there. If, they, if, the, if that core of four dudes, you know, from the, you know, the classic era got back together and went on tour, absolutely, I would be there. I don't think it would be as good though. Hmm. I, I I feel like for a while there, it seemed like Max and Andreas needed each other. They needed the push and pull of what each one of them was bringing to the table that made this really unique music. Um, and then I feel like with against, there was like this, you know, we got shit to prove. And there was like all, all guns blazing, all ideas. Let's throw them out there. Let's do them as good as we can. And it comes across on the album. But then I feel like it, ha- it, it, got, it got to this point with, with Sepultura and with Soulfly where it was like, it was all so just like, oh, it's another album, very similar to another album that you already did where songs kind of blend together. I don't know what's what. And um, unfortunately, I don't think Max has really come out of that. He's still doing things where I go, this is just okay. So I feel like if they did get back together, it might not be, it might not have the power that everyone would think that it would have. Um, so at this point, I'm fine. I'm fine with Sepultura <laughs> the way they are. Like I said, roller coaster of emotions. I do want them to go on the uh, tour that I mentioned, the, yeah. the out, with, out with the old tour. <laughs> out with the old. Um, get, just get rid of the, get rid of the old shit. Um, Cause I would love to hear them play songs off against. Um, and honestly, any album, because I'm pretty sure in a live setting, you know, th- throw in a song from Dante. I'm sure I would think it sounded fucking great. Um, but yeah, Against was a really great beginning for where they were going to go. But they there was just a whole little middle area that just didn't really do it for me and kind of lost me for a little while. But I thought they 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 won me back again. Yeah, and, um, full circle. We'll talk all about that on the uh, the next episode when we uh, do our top seven. But this that's the conclusion of our bottom eight. We have concluded. Albums. So, um, yeah, that's a. Uh, um, and so I, the next one is just going to be a love fest, I'm sure. Um, I feel like this is really similar to the Public Enemy episodes that we just did, where. Yeah where we have to nitpick because everything they've done has a quality to it. And then finally we get to the second episode where it's just like, this is just all <laughs> awesome shit. Everybody love everybody, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's like we said, I, I think it was, uh, I think I said it in the public enemy episodes was, I think this is proving to be the, uh, it's, this is the season of the no bad album bands. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's so, um, yeah. And I'll, clearly, you know, next next time I've got four Max Cavalera era albums in the top half. So clearly, um, that's where my preference lies. <laughs> like, if I'm going to throw on a Sepultura album, it's usually one of these four. But yeah. um, 
but I feel like that's just a nostalgic thing because I got into them with a rise and, you know, I'll get in, I'll get into it a little more when we talk about chaos AD and whatnot, but just like that, that period of my life and that period of hearing that music is so important to me that it's really hard for anything to compete with that. Um, so like I said, if you get, you know, you getting into them later or other people that got into them, not even hearing Max Cavalera stuff, I totally understand it because it's just always been what I was just going to say, funny, you should say that I have a friend I went to college with and we were talking about Sepultura and he had the album, uh, chaos AD, but he didn't know it was a different guy. So he thought Derek green was there from the start. He had no idea that it was too. Um, two different vocalists until I told him he was like, I mean, yeah, they I love them different to me, but I mean, yeah, I know okay. which, which, which is why it shocked me so much. Cause it's like, it, bruh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you, you didn't put together that fucking Max sounds wildly different to Derek green. Like, he's like, nah, I guess I didn't. <laughs> he just kind of looked at the floor and Jim. It, 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 the, the thing that's, that's become alarmingly apparent to me over the few last several years is that a lot of people that claim to be really into music and really like music, they don't really care about the details. So nah. that's why people will be like, Oh yeah, we're going to go see journey in concert. I'm like, are you? I mean, you're going to see, <laughs> they, they hired a sound alike to seeing Steve Perry's stuff. <laughs> and so, but people don't care because they probably don't yeah. even know. They probably don't even know that Steve Perry's not in journey and don't care. And so they probably um, don't know who Steve Perry is. Probably. So like, I think <laughs> that's just something that I've run into where so many people just seem to not care. And so it's just, and, when that, and you, maybe there's a beauty to that. It's just all about how you enjoy the music and you don't care about any yeah. of that stuff. Um, nerds like us, we get hung up on shit like that, but, yeah. um, it has to I be, mean, we don't go outside. So, you know, fair <laughs> <It> play. <laughs> imagine that it, it has to be a little bit, a little bit of a jolt to like, be like, Oh, we're going to go see Sepultura. It's this band totally made up of these Brazilian guys. And then this giant black dude comes out to do, and it's just like, <laughs> that, he, he looks a little bit different. Um, but, uh, that dude is an imposing guy. Like he, like, I wouldn't pick a fight with him. No, like, but and that's the thing is that he's a dude that exudes energy just standing there. <laughs> oh man, he's like yeah. he comes out on stage and he doesn't have to like run all over the stage and and do crazy shit. He just like does his awesome, thing, dude, and he commands yeah. the fucking crowd. Um. Anyway, so yeah, well, we could just talk. <laughs> this is already a long episode. We're I think we're almost approaching two hours, but um, yeah. <laughs> And next time we'll talk more about all this because it's, you know, yeah. Sepultura is a band to definitely, we definitely has a lot to be talked about. Um, and so, yeah, we'll continue with our top seven um, next week. Um, thank you very much for listening. Peanut Butter Platypus, for those of you, um, if you're new and you don't know what Peanut Butter Platypus means, just know that it refers to you because you made it through the entire episode and we love yeah. you. So, um, yeah. That's it. That's it for this episode of Crankton Rank. Do you have any parting words before we get the fuck out of here? Uh, looking forward to next week. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, on that note, um, as usual, I'm going to throw it over to my good friend, Eddie Sparks, and he is going to take us out. Dude! Later, dude! Dude! Later, dude! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs>